How are you, everyone? Thank you for having me. What's that? I have my clicker. So um, I, I'm not going to, I hope most of you have had a, a chance to play with Tumblr, at least in some part already. Um, I, I wanted to instead do just kind of a, a quick run through of the shape of our network rather than the, the specific tools. Um, we launched Tumblr five years ago as a place to follow uh, creators all over the world. And I'm happy to say that Tumblr today has really become a home to millions of creators. Uh, to the tune of about 600 posts per second, people are creating on our network um, all the time. Um, but separate from just this incredible community of people who are making stuff, we've uh, developed this really remarkable community, something that we never really expected but grew out of that community of cr uh, creators that I would describe as a community of curators, tens of millions of them on Tumblr today. Um, and they do something really interesting and really change the shape of our network in a way that we were never expecting. And the way I like to describe it is um, you have at the, the core of our network, at the core of our community, Again, there's millions of people who are making things, constantly inventing things, constantly remixing things, and sharing the stuff that um, inspires them, that you know, they're inspired to create. And then around them, this community of curators, many more than there are the creators, this community of curators draws this big surface area around those creators, um, slicing up their content into literally tens of millions of different permutations of that original creative work. Um, and the effect of that big surface area is it's able to draw in a much bigger audience than those creators would have been able to do just on their own. Um, and what I love about this shape that our network takes is that everybody at every level loves each other. So those creators are honored by those curators who use that creative work to express themselves um, and present it to an even bigger audience than those creators would normally have access to. Those curators love the creators um, because that creative work is how they define themselves. They're not necessarily the ones to get in front of the camera and play guitar or sing or write the witty quip, but when they find the quip, when they find the perfect image to express their mood, to express how they're feeling, to express what they're you know, in love with or inspired by, um, those creators are how they do it. It's, a, it's an incredible privilege for them to be able to um, find that work that they love so much. The audience loves, obviously, all of the great original creative works, but they also love the curators because they make it possible to find every possible permutation of every bizarre, interesting things, from um, you know, very specific types of political writing to blogs dedicated to Lady Gaga to very specific you know, verticals in fashion from you know, street style to nail art. Um, so this shape that the network takes is something, again, kind of accidental, something that just sort of happened over, uh, you know, evolved over the five years of Tumblr's life, um, but something that we're really kind of um, delighted about um, and uh, very proud of. So that audience today is uh, just recently passed 140 million people. Um, that's uh, measured by Quancast. So those are you know, people coming to the site every month to see all of that creative work and all of that work that's been sliced up by that uh, community of curators. Um, they, that, those 140 million people are generating about 16 billion impressions every month and growing. I think we're actually on track to pass 17 billion impressions this month. Um, and we were, in our, our first few years, pretty US-centric. That has changed pretty dramatically over the last three years. Um, I, I think today about 10% of our traffic is um, coming in from Brazil, another 10% coming in from Europe, um, and our, our uh, global traffic now uh, is dramatically outpacing US traffic, where we had you know, tremendous growth in the US over our first few years, and now uh, you know, very quickly being overshadowed by new people uh, coming on board and new mainstream traction in countries like uh, Brazil and the UK. Um, so that's just a little bit of the shape of our network, how people are using it today. Um, and what I'm really excited to talk about today is uh, some of the, the ways that fashion or the fashion community has been able to employ Tumblr in, I think, really novel and very creative ways. So these are just a few of them here. You see Vogue posting um, original content to Tumblr every day, um, and a lot of exclusive content, the world of Marc Jacobs, uh, Dolce & Gabbana, uh, wonderful content like uh, the New York Times' Team Magazine, really just a wealth of very extraordinary stuff and some uh, very creative uses that tend to be some of the, the most creative uses that really surprise us. Seeing some of the things that have come out of the fashion community are, are um, some of our, our favorite examples to hold up and show the world, you know, just how Tumblr is being used. So, yeah, a lot of really terrific. So you've got this massive yeah. audience, and you've got this massive audience that's interested in fashion content. Can you describe for me, like, who the typical consumer of fashion content is on Tumblr? I mean, who is she? 
Sure. I mean, if certainly anybody who's already or um, inspired by the world of fashion, which is obviously a very large community, um, one of the the interesting, you know, in, in that shape of the network, that curator community, I think, maps very nicely to the sort of aspirational community of, uh, well, as aspiring editors, aspiring stylists, people who are, you know, very excited about this industry to the point of wanting to participate in some meaningful way. Um, and Tumblr is a really easy, I think. Maybe not easy, but a very accessible place to break into that, where you know that that young aspiring stylist can start to collect the things that inspire them, can start to add their editorial to it, um, and begin to establish themselves in the community. Now, so, as a fair to say, like women in their young mid twenties or these teenagers, and are you know compared to maybe consumers of other kinds of content, are they more engaged? I mean, can you help me understand that audience a little bit better? Um, I can certainly. So, as far as the demographic breakdown, that's just something that we've never looked at particularly closely. I can tell you that when we have the fashion events, I, it is all over the map. I mean, it, it is um, sixteen-year-old girls who are just so thrilled to be a part of this big, you know, to be a real part of this, um, you know, th this community that. Um, you know, that they, they dream of, that they idolize, um, as well as the established creators, people like Terry Richardson, who uh, has kind of has a, a reinvigorated interest in sharing his personal photos because of Tumblr and is, you know, obviously a, a real fixture of this community. That, that kind of stuff, um, I think, represents a real diversity of people and uses. Um, and that's one of the things that we love most about this community is there is no set use case, um, you, even in these examples that I, I put up on screen. Um, the way fashion brands, the way the big players in fashion, the way the creators in fashion, the ed um, editorial community in fashion are using it is really all over the map. I mean, it, it always keeps us on our toes. And I mean, as you're well aware, there are you know dozens and dozens of online communities where in brands could invest their time. Mm -hmm. Why should brands invest their time in Tumblr, and why is this audience important? So the thing that I'm kind of the most proud of is, at its core, it's a creative community. And if you look around, there are a few other creative communities. I would say you know YouTube for music and film. I would say um, Instagram um, in photography. Tumblr is, I think, one of the most expressive and most robust creative communities. Pretty much any type of creator you could possibly imagine, whether it's music, writing, um, poetry, or fashion, and that can be style or editorial, is there. Um, and and um, uh, taking real advantage of the, the tools that we're offering. And those are the tools that we're constantly testing, constantly trying to invent. So when I, I think about why Anybody in the world should be excited about Tumblr brands or users alike. It should really be as a creative platform where you can express uh, the, 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 your, your um, creative abilities and really tell a story unlike any other platform out there. And you know, since Tumblr started, we've seen a lot of other maybe image-based social networks crop mm -hmm. up, um, Instagram being a good example, which you already mentioned, and also Pinterest. Do you see those businesses in any way a threat to what you do? Well, it's, it's worth, I, I think, drawing a line, at least we draw a line between the, the creative platforms, ones that are built around um, creating original works like YouTube or Instagram today, and the, the platforms that are generally used for syndication, things like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And we've had a lot of luck from the very beginning really embracing those, uh, those other channels as syndication for our creative network. So very early on, we had great integration with, with Facebook and Twitter. Today, the majority of our referral traffic, where any other publishing network, anything else like Tumblr, you would normally see 50% of the traffic being generated through uh, search referrals, so generated basically through Google. Twitter and Facebook today make up more of our inbound traffic than Google does, than Google search pages. So the ability for you know, these syndication points for these networks like Pinterest, uh, Pinterest Facebook, Twitter, um, to actually drive us traffic, to actually be complementary to our, our creative community, I think is terrific. And you know, I, I think if you look at the amount of Tumblr content on Pinterest today, you can see it's really, it's an extension, I think, of that network of curators. And how would you differentiate the two communities? One is you know, one's creative and one is purely uh, curation. And um, obviously, there's already a lot of brands, fashion brands, that are on Tumblr. What advice do you give them? I would really, I mean, the thing we always do, and it's worth noting that, uh, you know, we, we're always happy to, to give some examples, give some use cases. Um, we're, you know, always wary of calling them, like, best use cases. Um, but most of this is just stuff we, we've kind of taken from talking to you guys, looking at the way the community is um, able to find... Uh, or the ways that brands are, are able to find value in our community and in our network. Um, and we take a lot of notes and we 
go around and we, we share some of those things, some of those learnings um, with other people in this community. I mean, the, the use cases are not our invention, um, but the, the ones that always work, or the ones that generally work, and the ones that really surprise us and just make us happy um, are, are the ones that usually, again, there are no real rules here, but the ones that usually move us um, have the same characteristic, which is the brand, the organization, the designer, whatever it was, looked at the unique resources they had at their disposal, whether that was you know, oh, oh, just worldwide, incredibly um, you know, notable brand and reputation, could have been incredible distribution if they were a publication, it could be archives of incredible content, um, it could be in a, in a pre-existing really strong community, it could be that they have a great you know, team of stylists, a great team of editors, any number of these things that are unique resources and leveraging those to, to do something that really adds value to our network. So just one example of that would be um, the New York Times going into their archives and starting their Lively Morgue blog, which is uh, you know, just really collections ripped right out of their archives, scanned beautifully, and in kind of a novel way, presented in a novel way. Um, and just by tapping this content that they, they had sitting in a back room, they've created one of the mo more interesting and popular channels on Tumblr today. One other example is you know, when um, a brand like Vogue shows up on Tumblr and simply applies that incredibly powerful brand to our pre-existing community. And you see these you know, young aspiring stylists on Tumblr when they have their you know, daily what they wore photo liked by Vogue or got even reblogged by one of these fashion brands, they're like, they're, they're in love. I mean, they're ready to pass out. This was like one of the, the most inspiring moments of their, their you know, lives and their, their, um, the beginnings of their career. It's like a, a really powerful thing to see. And for a brand like a Vogue or a, a DNG or a DKNY to come in and kind of touch the community in that you know, very validating way, in that very positive and reinforcing way, um, is a really powerful thing that the, the community just adores and you know, wel welcomes in <laughs> um, with open arms. So during New York Fashion Week last September, yeah. um, Tumblr got, was very publicly criticized for some sponsorship fees and fees you had demanded for access to bloggers. And shortly thereafter, you parted ways with your fashion director. Um, what happened and what did you learn from that experience? Um, that was definitely heavily publicized. I, I think it was making a, a bit ado about you know, not, um, a, a fairly small incident, actually. So first of all, I, I should say that the, those two things were completely decoupled that the uh, um, Rich's move from Tumblr, Rich, who was you know, one, one of my um, favorite colleagues, somebody I've been wanting to work with for many years before starting Tumblr, and uh, somebody I still really adore today. Um, but no, that, the, his, that campaign that he was working on was one that was, um, you know, we weren't demanding anything from anybody. That was a, uh, passing a, um, a proposal around for feedback with a small group of people, one of which decided to make a, a big fuss about it, which was unfortunate. I mean, what did we learn from that? Um, uh, I, you know, I, I don't think we, we let it wear on us too much. I think uh, this is still a community that we love being very open with. We love ta you know, taking risks with and doing experiments with, and I don't think we've let that incident slow us down, and I think you know, the last few months really speak to that. And I think through all that, uh, there was a lot of demand also for an analytics tool. You know, you're welcoming brands in the platform, but a lot of them are still like manually counting likes mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Where are you with that development of that tool? Is it so coming? actually starting later this week, we're, we're beginning to talk to more and more brands about, um, or I should say we're going to be talking to brands for the first time about some of these new tools that we're making available to brands and advertisers. So um, nothing to show off or talk about just yet, but we, we do have some good stuff on the way out. That's good news. And mm -hmm. you have a new fashion director now. We do, Valentine, yes. Uh, who I'm absolutely thrilled to have on the team. And he's, uh, I mean, joined officially a few weeks ago, um, has been helping us tremendously for you know, many months now, uh, including organizing the really stellar uh, February Fashion Week in New York City, which was just brilliant. I mean, really an incredible time, I think. So. And so what is, is his role any different maybe than Rich's is, or how can we understand how fashion brands will be working with him going forward? So I think what we're most excited about now, I mean, we, we invested a lot previously into um, pulling together these fashion weeks that get, got to you know, incorporate our community in a really meaningful way and in a way that was also meaningful to a lot of these you know, brands and the rest of the fashion uh, community and industry. Um, we want to, I think from... We, we want to continue to do that, and I, I, I think we were very happy with the, the event that we pulled off in February um, and everybody that we got to work with in February. Um, but I, I think we're now looking for what new stuff that we can create in, in addition to um, supplementing the existing you know, events, in addition to um, ha having a role or presence in um, 
the kind of established industry. We're very excited to see what kind of new events, what type of new role we can play in this industry, really. So, you know, we're, we've, I have a tremendous amount of work to do all around, and um, we have, uh, you know, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of work to do just to, to make sure that brands are being as successful as they can possibly be inside our network. But working with those brands to uh, uh, create you know, new opportunities for the people in our communities, for, so for those aspirational bloggers and creators inside our network who are looking to do more and more and more. And right now, you know, we're limited to sending a dozen, maybe a few dozen of them out to these events twice a year. We'd really love to do a lot more than that. We would love to give them much, many more touch points into the industry. We would love to get the, give those brands more touch points into those audiences that those creators are building on Tumblr. Again, an audience to the tune of 140 million people today. Um, and uh, there's a lot more that I think we can be doing outside of, you know, just helping brands successfully launch on Tumblr and outside of just participating in you know, Fashion Week twice a year. And why, are for, why is it important to you to forge those connections? To, to us, I think the, first of all, because I don't think anybody else is really in this position today to give creators a platform, um, to, to offer creators opportunities like these. Um, I mean, this is sort of, I think the only place that we've ever seen this previously was you know, the, the YouTube celebrities, right? Those, those kids that got in front of the camera and were all of a sudden, you know, getting as many downloads as, you know, there have been Beatles albums sold. Um, and I, I think the fact that we can play this role in such a diversity of communities today, one of them being fashion, which is huge. I mean, it represents nearly 20% of our entire network. It's like an incredible thing and an incredible privilege for us. Um, and it's something that we really uh, want to it's a place where we feel like we're, we're in the unique position to add some value, and we want to make sure that we do our part in that. And um, you announced at an advertising conference earlier this month that Tumblr would be getting into advertising. Um, can you describe that first product and what your thinking is there? Sure. So there are a few places on Tumblr where we already promote content. Um, most of it is editorial. A little bit of a little bit of it is algorithmic. Um, so two examples, just real quick, and these are two examples that will be available to advertisers um, in the next few weeks. Um, one is the Tumblr Spotlight, which is where you know, new users that sign up for Tumblr get to browse everything from um, celebrities to musicians to bands, sorry, to musicians to like museums on Tumblr. And um, that's a place that's a you know, major point of discovery for content on our network. That's one spot that's going to be available to advertisers shortly. Um, maybe a little bit more interesting than that is Tumblr Radar, which is a, a unit on Tumblr that gets about 120 million impressions every day. Um, it's seen by everybody across the network and has, you know, is already, uh, has basic means for targeting. So right now when you see that, depending on what language or what part of the world you're logging into Tumblr from, you'll see uh, content that's lightly tailored to you. Um, we're going to allow uh, sponsors starting this week to use that chunk of uh, attention on the dashboard to actually reach users in our network, again, with the same, you know, targeted means um, uh, with all of the you know, creative capabilities of our platform. So that's one of the things that I'm sort of the most proud of is where you're relegated to 140 characters when you're advertising on Twitter today, when you're relegated to that little box on Facebook that if you've ever advertised in, you know, carries a tremendous amount of sort of rules and kind of refinement around it. Um, Tumblr is a unit that is pr basically as unlimited as our network. So whether or not you want to tell your story with video, photography, um, a set of photography, uh, links, uh, uh, any rich media, you're completely free to do that. And I, I think the sort of tools for targeting and placement that we're building around that are going to be fairly novel and tuned to the kind of creative, creative elements of the advertising that we're hoping to build on Tumblr. Now, for a long time, you, and I'm remembering a particular um, LA Times interview yeah. that you did, you said t Tumblr would never go into advertising. Um, why the change of heart? <laughs> Um, so, I mean, as I said at Ad Age, I was probably being a little bit of an idiot when I said that, but I also think it was a pretty fair assessment of advertising on, on the web today. I just think it's tremendously uncreative and not at all tuned to what Tumblr is about. Again, it's a, a creative community. It's a, a community that values creative expression. So when you see an ad that, I, you know, the one I just, I took a screenshot of yesterday was um, an American Express ad at the top of uh, Twitter where you could just see them, they're squeezed into this tiny format, so they have to, like, there's a bit.ly link and there's a, you know, every word is, is missing its vowels, not that I, I have, I, I can knock anybody for, for skipping a vowel every now and then, but the, you know, this, this thing, like, packed into this tiny tweet was just not only not compelling, in my opinion, not, not terribly compelling, it was also just not, um, I, I didn't f find a particularly, you know, meaningful medium to tell a story. 
um, which is fine. You know, for coupons, it's fine. When it's Google telling you, you know, here are the five places that, um, to buy this camera, that's fine. But uh, a band isn't able to sell out a show on Google today. Um, you can't tell a story in a tweet today. Um, and I don't know what's going on in Facebook ads, but the, the, you know, the, if you look at the, the suite of tools that are out there, they're anything but creative. So you know, that was my reaction when I, in that interview, and I, I would say still today, to the state of advertising or digital advertising, which is inc incredibly effective in certain contexts, um, obviously incredibly sophisticated today, um, the means for targeting and you know, everything that's, that's come along in those tools is incredible and really valuable and really useful to advertisers, but it is anything but creative. And I think our opportunity as a creative network to empower creative advertising is uh, interesting, if, if nothing else, but I, I think has some real potential. Um, and we've got about uh, two minutes left, and I want to know if anyone had any questions, and if you do, could you, there's a microphone there, I see, and I think there's one on the other side. Or you can raise your hand yes, and please, shout. Yes, please, questions. <laughs> Or you can shout, up to you. Um, hi, it's, my name is Olivia Gossett, I'm with ILikeWhatYou'reWearing.com. Um, again, we're, we curate Rise of Fashion and present it on an e-commerce editorial fashion magazine. Readers can purchase by right off photo editorial from my story. Um, so it's a very content-driven e-commerce website. And what I'm curious about, uh, obviously Tumblr has a lot of photos on it, and that's a big driver of why people go to Tumblr in the first place. They want to get inspired by these photos. Are there any types of images um, you think could lead to more sharing, uh, whether it be a photo of, is this, I mean, specifically in fashion, but uh, whether it be a photo of editorial or tweet style, is there anything that carries more weight than others? Do you want me the question? Oh, sure, yeah, do you um, She's asking if there's any sort of images in particular that are successful with the fashion audience or on, popular on Tumblr. Uh, so, I mean, when, when I, um, the stuff that we see really break out and become hugely successful is usually the stuff that's novel, that's pushing boundaries. So just as an example, when Jamie Beck kind of invented cinemagraphs on Tumblr, that became you know, a, a meme or a movement beyond just that original photo that she shared. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be you know, a new graphic format, but the more that you can kind of push boundaries and do something that really surprises people. Again, as a creative community, I think creators sort of um, you know, they, they beget these audiences, um, or, or yeah, they, they beget these audiences that, that are um, looking to be surprised, looking for something new that really moves them, particularly in a community like Tumblr. I mean, these aren't people who are kind of just turning on the TV, you know, waiting for the, the same old thing that, that makes them comfortable. These are people who are seeking out the stuff that they really, really love, looking for things that inspire them. So if you can find things that really, like, kind of blow their minds, that's the stuff that we see go the farthest. I mean, there are plenty of ways, you know, as in any network to really, I actually would say Tumblr isn't terribly subject to gaming the way, you know, YouTube is or one of those things where, you know, just more hits means that you get pushed up to the top, which means more hits, which means you stay at the top. Um, Tumblr tends to be, you know, a, a real meritocracy. The people that show up with good original stuff tend to do very, very well. Um, but if you can find a, you know, really creative, really novel spin to put on the things that you're doing, that's the stuff that I would say goes the furthest. Yeah. We'll do one more and then we're over time. Yep, back there. So, well, we do two things for attribution right now. I mean, it's worth pointing out that those creators in our community and you know, so many of the creators who are flocking to Tumblr are really excited and feel very empowered by the ability for their creative works to go far and wide, for them to be able to get this distribution without being dependent on publishers, agencies, distributors, you know, anything else. They can build these audiences on their own, and that's an incredibly empower empowering thing for you know, everyone from uh, the, the, the up-and-comer like a Jamie Beck or from, you know, Terry Richardson on Tumblr. Um, we do do a lot to make sure that that attribution is sacred. We, we enforce attribution everywhere that that uh, photo or that work appears on Tumblr. Um, that means that when, when you create that post on Tumblr and it gets spread around the community, it is always linking back to you, much like that YouTube video, which is, you know, wherever it's embedded, it's always linking back to the source. 
Um, there's more that we're constantly doing there, so we, we overhauled that attribution pretty dramatically last year with, I think, great success. Um, and we have you know, a lot more that we uh, have in the works to make sure that that attribution is prominent, totally automatic, um, and uh, you know, as effective as it can really be for those creators. I mean, attribution is something we take tremendously seriously. And by the way, when a creator is unhappy with how their stuff is being presented anywhere on our network, we're incredibly responsive. I think we're one of the most responsive networks in terms of complying with you know, any uh, copyright requests. But uh, yeah, we, we do uh, everything we can to make sure that you know, your creative works are uh, attributed to you. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for, so thank, thank you, you. Thank you.